All right, let's talk about the perfect tow vehicle for your small trailer, or in my case, a teardrop trailer. Now there's a caveat. There is no perfect tow vehicle. So what you wanna do is find the right vehicle that's perfect for you. So when I first bought my very first vestibule, I started to tow it with this 2017 Crosstrek. Now let me give you the details on this Crosstrek. In 2017, uh, the motor is a 2.0 liter motor, four cylinder. It has a 1,500 pound towing capacity. It has a 150 pound tongue weight and a 200 pound tongue weight if you use an original Subaru hitch and accessories. It also has 145 pounds of torque. So what that means when I was towing my vestibule trailer for the first time my first vestibule trailer, was that the vestibule trailer averages about 1,500 pounds empty. The tongue weight's roughly about 150 pounds. So when you start to add product and water and other things to the teardrop, you could probably be anywhere between 1,800 pounds to even 2,000 pounds, depending on how much you load it up. So what I'm really saying is that I was pulling too much with this car when I was doing it the first time. And I definitely don't recommend doing that. You want to only tow on how much your manufacturer and owner's manual recommends that you tow with the vehicle. Otherwise, it's unsafe. You're going to cause unnecessary wear and damage to your car. And it's not good for anybody, especially if someone wants to get hurt. So you want to follow the rules. So a lot of times people ask me, how was it towing your teardrop trailer with this Subaru? And to be honest, on the flats, it was okay. But anytime you hit a hill, just forget it. Now, when, when you were towing on the flats, you weren't going anywhere quickly. Like you were moving along slowly, taking your time. You weren't weaving in and out of traffic, but it was doing the job. Another thing I recommend when you're towing, if your car has manual mode or you have a manual transmission, which is very hard to find nowadays. Most people don't have it. Most teenagers don't even know how to drive a manual transmission. Most people that I hired to work for me couldn't even drive a manual. So that's why I think they make so many automatics nowadays. But uh, if you have manual mode in your car, use that because it's a lot easier on your vehicle when towing because you can control the RPMs, you can control when the transmission is going to shift, and you just have much, so much more control over the vehicle's performance, especially when you're towing. So use manual mode whenever you can when you're towing. If your car is overdrive, you definitely want to take it over overdrive when towing because that's not good for the transmission either. So when I was towing on the flats and using manual mode, it was getting the job done, but remember, I was a little over my weight capacity, especially if I loaded up the trailer, which I don't recommend, but it did the job. I'm sure it was super hard on the vehicle. But I live in Colorado. The Rocky Mountains are just 15 minutes that way. And what I discovered is that anytime you hit a hill, just forget it. You are going nowhere fast. Uh, we have in our area Eisenhower climb, the Eisenhower Tunnel climb. We have Vail Pass. And uh, for those of you that are not from Colorado, just know that those are huge mountains to climb. And this car, towing a trailer, did not do a great job doing it. Now, driving this car around town is awesome. I love driving this car, especially in the snow. I, I say the car gets a smile on its face when it sees snow because it's the best car I've ever driven in the snow so it's amazing for that. So as I was searching for a car for my second vestibule trailer, I'm doing this a second time around, and I didn't want to use this again because it just didn't have enough power and enough oomph to get up the hill. So I looked at a few other things. Now when I set up this car for towing, I used an original Subaru hitch and original Subaru components to tow the vehicle, or to tow the trailer, I should say. And uh, what I like about that is, first of all, it's recommended in the owner manuals that you use original Subaru products in, in setting up your hitch. 
but what I really also like about that is that Subaru does a great job of actually hiding that hitch underneath the vehicle so you don't see much of it when you're not using that. And for aesthetic purposes, I think that's really cool and I like the look of that. The hitch I was also using was an inch and a quarter receiver. And so I didn't have the big two inch receiver because you didn't need it. It was overkill because the inch and a quarter toes up to 3,000 pounds and has a 200 pound tongue weight, which was fine for what I was doing. So here's the uh, receiver I have on the Subaru. You can see it's the uh, inch and a quarter and I have my bike rack in there currently. And that was a plenty, uh, plenty sturdy enough, plenty heavy enough. Underneath there is the uh, seven pin adapter for towing. And this worked out really good, and I'll put this set up on my new vehicle also. So let's go talk about those other vehicles that I looked at. So this is the second vehicle I considered to tow my teardrop trailer. Now this was an easy choice for me to consider because I already own the truck. I actually own several of these. This is a 2002 Toyota Tacoma, four-cylinder, and it's a two-wheel drive. So listen to the stats on this truck. It uh, has a 2.4 liter four-cylinder. The towing capacity is 5,000 pounds. Yeah, 5,000 pounds with a 500 pound um, tongue weight. That's huge. Now this is a little truck. So that's, that's amazing. Now one thing that's different between trucks and cars is that cars have what we call a unibody where this is a full frame. So trucks are generally made for carrying stuff, towing stuff. They're made to work. <laughs> I mean, they're a work truck. They're a work vehicle. They're made to kind of beat up, get beat up and work. So this has huge towing capacity. The problem with this though is the four cylinder motor. So again, on flats, this would be fine just like the Subaru. But on hills, this thing is going to suffer on the hills because it just doesn't have the power to pull up the hill. So it could tow, again, 5,000 5, pounds towing capacity, 500 pounds tongue weight, plus 245 pound torque, which is way above the 145 pound torque on the Subaru Crosstrek. So a lot of torque with this vehicle. But again, small engine, not enough power, to get it up the mountain passes. And this truck, in my opinion, you could tow with a small trailer and it won't beat it up. I have towed trailers with these little trucks for literally years. And these Toyotas in particular are bulletproof. They're a great truck. Um, sure, it's harder on the vehicle and engine, but you're not gonna beat these Toyotas up. They're, they're just amazing, they're bulletproof. So this would do the job and it would get me in the mountains. And I don't think I would beat up the vehicle in a huge way, but I'm not gonna be going there very fast. It's gonna be slow going. Again, probably 35, 40 miles an hour with the hazards on when you're crawling up the passes. Downhill is fine, flats are fine, but it's not going to climb. And again, it has the capacity to tow a teardrop or a small trailer with ease from a functional standpoint. Again, the trailer weighs 1,500 pounds empty. Let's, let's go crazy and say it's 2,000 pounds loaded. This is 5,000 pounds towing capacity. You're well within that weight limit. So you can, you can tow this very comfortably with that type of weight. But again, the engine is the problem. It's not gonna move fast. So I consider using this vehicle, but from having experience towing small trailers with this vehicle, it's gonna to be too slow for me. I don't wanna have that. Plus this is two wheel drive and I like to go in the back country. I don't mind camping in campgrounds. It's actually, that's fun also, but I like to get out in the um, open space where there's not a lot of people and generally, uh, a little bit of four-wheeling, not a lot. I can't do a lot of four-wheeling. I'm, I'm not into that because you'd tear up the trailer and the vehicle probably in the situation. But uh, I'd like to get back on some rough roads or some sandy roads or maybe even a tiny river you got across or something like that 
And this would easily get stuck when I'm trying to go do some dispersed camping. So still an option, but not the one for me yet. Let's take a minute and talk about torque and what that means. You hear me talking about foot pounds of pressure of torque a vehicle can produce. And what does that mean exactly? So let's see if I can explain torque. Let's see you have a bolt and you want to loosen this bolt and you have a wrench. And you want to put this wrench on here and this is a smaller wrench, the space you have between the bolt and the end of it here. It takes a lot of effort to turn this because there's not a lot of torque, but you can gain torque or another way to think about it is leverage by getting a bar, breaker bar or something longer. And so it's much easier and faster to turn the bolt now because you have a lot more torque. There's a longer line between the bolt and the end of your handle here, which is going to give you more torque. So in a vehicle that gives you faster and more torque pressure at the tire. I hope that's helpful. I want to talk about some other vehicles I considered when I was thinking about purchasing a vehicle to tow a teardrop trailer. So I also looked at the Toyota RAV4. Now the Toyota RAV4 is the number one selling SUV in the United States right now. So a lot of people like that car. So I was looking at the forms, I was looking at the groups and people love that car. So I had to go test drive it. Well, don't beat me up. This is just my opinion. I know people love that car and I actually love Toyota, especially for their dependability. But I drove that car and it does have a 3,500 towing capacity, 30, I'm sorry, 3,500 pound towing capacity if you buy it in either the TRD model or the um, Adventure model, which they don't, all the dealers don't keep in stock all the time. But with that model, you can tow 3,500 pounds with it. And uh, when I drove the um, RAV4, it just, uh, it was a little loose. It seemed a little squirrely when I was driving it. The road noise was really loud in the cab. And this is what I hated the most, was they have this screen that just sticks up in the dash. It's not really integrated in the dash, but it just sticks up out of the blue. And it's, it looks like a, to me, it looks like a, you know, entry level Hyundai or something that, that would do something like that. So um, I didn't care for it after I test drove it and especially when I got in the cab. Uh, it's more than capable of towing a small trailer like a teardrop and it probably lasts forever. So don't beat me up if you have one. I'm sure they're great cars. I didn't fall in love with it, but most of the rest of Americans really love that car. So I considered that. I also considered a Toyota 4Runner. That would have been more than enough to, to kind of uh, fulfill my towing capacity needs. But the Toyota 4Runner is very expensive to buy, even used, and the gas mileage is absolutely horrible. So I kind of wrote that off the list. I also considered a truck, specifically a Toyota Tacoma. I've owned a few of those in the past. They've, they're great trucks. But I decided I don't want a truck. A truck just rides a little differently than a car. And I've been driving a car for a while and I just like the feel of the car. I like the way you sit in it. I like the ride. I like your visibility in the car. So um, after thinking about it, I really wanted to stick with a car. Plus, I know I could put a shell on the truck, but I didn't want my gear exposed, especially my bike. Uh, one of the key things that I worry about is my bike. I want it covered. I want it out of the elements and I want to make it a little less easy for someone to, to rip off, if you will. So that's why I didn't go with the truck. But those were all great considerations. We, again, let's review. I looked at the, uh, my, my current Subaru Crosstrek. I looked at a four-cylinder Toyota, which I have. I looked at a um, Toyota RAV4. I looked at a Toyota 4Runner. And I looked at a Toyota Tacoma, or considered a. Toyota Tacoma and a 4Runner. I didn't look at them, but I considered them. And so um, there's a lot more other cars to consider, believe me. Uh, I know you have the Honda Pilot out there that has the towing capacity. Um, I did consider, I wanted to mention, a Honda Odyssey van. Now I've owned a few of these for my guys that come into work. And I actually towed my very first teardrop trailer, my first vestibule, with 
a Honda Odyssey for a little while. And that actually worked out really well. I mean, there's tons of room in a Honda Odyssey. The towing capacity, depending on the year, is 3,000, I'm sorry, 3,000 to 3,500 pounds. And it's a V6, so it has enough power. But when I went looking at those again, I just didn't really, um, I don't know, I wasn't digging the minivan vibe. Even though there was lots of room in there, uh, a minivan is a little harder to drive around town. It's a little harder to see around. And again, I just really enjoyed a car. So I didn't want to try a minivan again. But that's the other thing I considered. But to repeat myself, there's a lot of other manufacturers that I did not look at. This is just what I was interested in in considering. So let's talk about now what I ended up purchasing to tow my second and brand new vestibule. All right, here she is. This is the car I decided to go with. This is a 2013 Subaru Outback. It uh, has 247 pounds of torque. It has a 3.6 V6 engine in it. And it also has a traditional geared transmission versus the CVT transmission that Subaru uses in all its current vehicles. Now there's some debate whether the CVT is a good transmission or the traditional geared transmissions are better. I don't know much about them, but there's a lot online that talks about that there. This has a 3,000 pound towing capacity, so more than you would need for what I'm doing. Again, my trailer, which is the vestibule, is 1,500 pounds roughly unloaded, max, max 2,000 pounds loaded. So I'm still got a thousand pounds of leeway, which is great. 200 pound ton capacity. And so this should tow just fine. Now I drove several different Subarus. I drove older Subarus. I drove newer Subarus. And I was leaning towards the Subaru with the 2.5 liter, which is the four cylinder. And it would tow it because that has a 2,700 pound towing capacity. But again, I don't think I'd get anywhere very fast. And I also live in the Rocky Mountains and we're climbing hills all the time, most of the time. And so it's just a pain and a drag climbing those mountains in a vehicle that doesn't have the power. So I started to steer away from the 2.5 four cylinder and settled on the V6. Now, after I drove the V6 for a while, I was convinced that it definitely had the power I needed to tow a trailer. It is zippy, runs around town fast, and is great. Now, technically, this is my beater. So um, it looks kind of nice, but if you go through it, there's some things that are wrong with it. But it's, uh, it's an older car. I decided to get a second car to tow just my trailer and for work to do work stuff. This is like my truck, if you will, for example, because the back's so big, you can put a lot of stuff in it. I just wanted an older car to take out camping to use for work that was not nice because I know it's gonna get scratched. You know how when you're camping, uh, you're driving through the woods, trees scrape your car, they get scratched. And if I had a brand new $40,000 Outback, I'd be super upset about it getting scratched. And I may not take it in the backwoods because I'm afraid to damage the car. And again, I like to camp in the backwoods. I like to get on the dirt roads. I like to get far away from everybody, find my own little spot and camp. And so that's why I chose this car. Another reason why I chose this car is it's all wheel drive all the time. Subaru is known for one of the best all wheel drive systems. So I can get back in the mud a little bit. I'm not gonna do serious four wheeling, but if I get on some gravel or a sandy road and I'm towing the trailer, I have the ability to get out of a sticky situation. So that's another benefit of the Subaru. I was considering at the time uh, selling my Crosstrek and just buying a brand new Subaru Outback. But I'm so glad I didn't do that because after having this, once I get into my Crosstrek, it is a dream to drive. Like it's, it's so smooth, it's tiny, even though it's a subcompact SUV, it's just so fun to drive. I would never want to get rid of my Crosstrek as a daily driver because it's just so fun to drive. But it lacks the room to carry stuff and store stuff like this has. Again, there's no one vehicle that solves all your needs. 
There is also a problem with each of them. There's also a sacrifice with each of them. So that's why I have a second beater to run around and go camping in. I think from 2020 up is that they no longer have the 3.6 six cylinder. They went to a 2.4 four cylinder turbo. And that has a towing capacity, which is 500 pounds more than this. It's 3,500 pound towing capacity. So that has enough power. For those of you that have that, I see you in the forums and in in also in the Facebook groups, and everybody says that tows their trailer wonderfully. That's a great option also as the 2.4 liter turbo Subaru. But again, I already have a Subaru Crosstrek. I didn't want to get a brand new Outback and just because I'd be afraid to, to really work it hard. And so um, I wanted to use beater. I wanted to use car that I could beat up a little bit, but had the power, more than enough power, more than enough capability to tow the trailer. And again, after having this, an Outback is amazing. I'll, we'll rock around together and show you the car in just a moment. But I'm telling you, driving the Crosstrek as a daily driver, I totally prefer. I like small cars anyways, and that Crosstrek is just unbelievably awesome. So let's go ahead and, and walk around this Outback and I'll give you a tour of the car. So this 2013 Subaru Outback, it has some problems. I mean, you can, probably can't see it in the video here, but the, the bumper's new. They put on a new bumper. I bought it from a small dealership and the paint doesn't match exactly. I mean, the whites are off. I know you probably can't see it in the video, but, but they are. But there's not a lot of body damage at all with it. And here's, here's what the, the Outback kind of uh, does best, and that's all this room in the back. Uh, this one came with leather seats, which I really didn't care whether I got leather or not. It just came with it. It's tan. I'm not a fan of tan, but it's leather, so I'd rather have tan leather than tan fabric because it's a lot easier to clean. And so here's what the Subaru does best is these seats go down and you have all this room to store stuff. So that's, that's awesome. For an older car, it still is in decent shape. Uh, I like how Subaru left the floors black so they don't get so dirty and they left everything tan in here. But it's older, but it's going to do the job just fine. One thing that I noticed about the Subaru is that it does not have a soft ride, even like my Crosstrek. So the Crosstrek, being a subcompact SUV, should have a worse ride than a big car like this due to the wheelbase. But um, it rides better than this. And so what I learned is that Subaru changed suspensions in 2015. So they got a lot better ride, comfort ride. So this ride's a little rougher, but hey, it's, it's made to be a work truck, for example. And I'm just gonna run around town with it. So, um, and anyways, if I got a newer Subaru, I'd have to get the CVT transmission. And again, I wanted the traditional transmission. Also, in the back here, I found out that I can put my bike in the back and close the door. And the only way that works is that if I take off the front tire of my bike, open this hatch, and uh, put it in the spare tire area because that buys me a little more um, depth. So I can get about four more inches of depth. The handlebars fit in here, so that's what I'll do. I'll make a mount in here for my bike. And it's really important for me to uh, put my bike in the car. The reason why I like to put my bike in the car is because I, ha I came from a camper van before and what was great about the camper van is that you could put the bikes in the back, they were secure and safe all night long. So I wanted a vehicle where I could put the bike, even if I have to take off the front tire, where I could put the bike in the car so if I go into a restaurant to eat or I go into a shopping mall and, while I'm traveling or just at night, I wanted it a little more secure. Now that doesn't mean someone can steal it because they can. Anybody could steal anything if they want, but it just makes it a little hard. And that's what we do is we just try to make things a little more difficult for thieves. So it's a harder for them to steal something. That's the vehicle I chose. Remember, there's tons of options for you to choose the correct vehicle for towing a teardrop trailer or a small camping trailer for that matter. And so I just looked at a few 
that I thought was important, but there's other options to consider, there's other manufacturers to consider, and I'd like to know what kind of vehicle you use and your feelings on the vehicle that you chose. I'd love to hear what you say based on your experience. Could it be different than mine? Could it be the same? But I would love to hear all that. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Or better yet, just give me a thumbs up. And like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want more information like this. I hope you guys enjoy camping. I hope you enjoy teardrop trailering. And until next time, I'll see you soon.